Oh boy, do we have one today. What you may ask would bring the last professional broadcaster out of hiding. 24 hours, maybe 36 hours removed from the last Not Sam Wrestling podcast coming out on a Monday morning as always. What could bring the last professional broadcaster to fire up the Not Sam studio, get on this microphone, and uh, get back to having this conversation? Well, the answer is because it is time to speculate wildly. I answer the call to speculate wildly like Batman answers that signal. And this is one of the greatest days for wild speculation in recent memory because the rumors have been confirmed. Yes, as I'm doing my radio show this morning, I'm checking Twitter during a commercial break, and there it is. There it is. That face on that account. I got to check. Even in the Elon era, is there a check mark? It's a golden check mark from the WWE Twitter account. Breaking Jade Cargill has signed a multi year contract with WWE as first reported. By ESPN. I'm going, no way. Triple H is going, yes way. He types in a dominant, well, somebody types in for him, a dominant athlete who's here to change the game. Uh, That's always how I read it as Triple H. Join me in welcoming the newest WWE superstar, Jade Cargill, to the WWE universe. I'm going, I can't believe it. I got to go to ESPN, and I see the article in print. Former AEW champion Jade Cargill signs with WWE. Jade Cargill, a rising star in professional wrestling and former champion in all elite wrestling AEW, has signed with WWE promotion officials told ESPN. It's a great thing to have ESPN break this story, number one, because it gives instant credibility to the fact that it's a big story. But number two, because then you can leave it to ESPN to fill in all those details. WWE maybe doesn't want to name drop AEW. Maybe doesn't want to name drop Tony Khan. Maybe doesn't want to name drop where exactly Jade Cargill came from. But ESPN can. So go ahead. Let's get the buzz rolling. You know WWE wanted it. Cargill, who was AEW's longest reigning TBS champion and appeared on AEW television as recently as two weeks ago, will start with WWE on Tuesday at its Performance Center in Orlando, officials said. Now, already, you've got to be wondering, if you're Tony Khan, was it worth it? Jade Cargill, of course, has the run of runs with that TBS championship Uh, defines the title with smart Mark Sterling by her side and then loses it for the first time, one defeat in AEW to a returning Chris Statlander uh, and then disappears from TV. Jade Cargill then comes back, attacks Chris Statlander, so we see her beating up the champ and then by the time Dynamite Uh, Or by the time Rampage is on, we already know that there has been a pre-taped match in which Jade Cargill loses clean, no surprises, to Chris Statlander, but also that Jade Cargill is very heavily rumored to be leaving AEW. So common sense would tell you, well, sure, if Jade is leaving, bring her back to put your champion over one more time and to make sure that Chris Statlander gets that clean victory. And if you're a wrestling geek... Yeah, but realistically, I think twice as many people watch Dynamite as watch Collision, more or less, right? On an average week, I, I think that's fair. I'm not. I'm sorry, not Collision, uh, Rampage, right? Twice as many people watch Dynamite as Rampage, more or less. So realistically, only half the people that might have seen Jade return and beat up Chris Statlander actually saw Chris get the W back from her. And of those people who saw it, I would imagine a great deal knew that she was getting that W because 
Jade was on her way out of the company and very possibly to WWE. So does it do any, I don't necessarily think it did anything for Chris Statlander. Now I'm a huge Chris Statlander fan. So I don't think that it hurt her, but I don't think Chris needed it. I think she got her victory over Jade and it's almost like keep Jade off television for as long as humanly possible. So by the time she goes to WWE, it's like we were done with her, not bring her back for two shows, have Chris get yet another victory over her and then have her go to WWE immediately. Cause then it's like, oh yeah, we, we only did this because we knew she was going to WWE and you can write in an article on ESPN that she was on AEW like two weeks ago. So I do wonder logically if, if that made sense, unless you wanted to give her the great out, right? Unless you wanted to say like, hey, well, while we have you for an, another show, let's, you know, give the fans something to remember you by the way WWE did with Dean Ambrose, right? They gave Dean Ambrose maybe the greatest goodbye that any superstar has ever gotten on their way out of a company. Uh, it is unclear, the article continues, if Cargill will go straight to the WWE main roster or if she will first perform for its developmental brand, NXT. I have a lot to say about that. Uh, Cargill, 31, has been wrestling professionally for only two years. Her in-ring debut came in AEW as part of a high-profile mixed tag team match in March 2021. She teamed with NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal against Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. Man, they are scooping up that tag match. And I'll tell you, Maybe the best booking anyone's ever had is Red Velvet being put into that match. Good for her. You talk about a decision that was made that is going to continue to benefit the person who it was made for for years at this point. Red Velvet gets name dropped in the Big Jade Cargill press release. Not too shabby. Uh, Rhodes, one of Cargill's mentors at his Nightmare Factory in Georgia, signed with WWE last year and headlined WrestleMania 39. Ooh, connection between Jade and Cody, huh? Cargill was the first AEW TBS champion and held the title from January 5th, 2022 until May 28th, 2023, a span of 508 days. I know one Papa Triple H who loves long title reigns. The Florida native is considered a major future star in professional wrestling and beyond, hey, professional wrestling and beyond, what, you mean the type of company uh, that owns WWE, but then also is a major player in Hollywood, Ari Emanuel Endeavor, huh? Maybe the first big signing under the Un Endeavor umbrella. We got a lot more than wrestling here, Jade. The five foot ten Cargill was a fitness model before wrestling and has nearly 1 million Instagram followers. I don't know if you have to put in the... Instagram followers, but I mean, more power to her, I guess. Uh, she played, <laughs> did you hear how many Instagram followers she has? Probably could, I mean, whatever. She played Division I basketball at Jacksonville University. Her partner is former Cincinnati Reds player Brandon Phillips, elite athlete fever. Cargill and Phillips are uh, uh, owners of a women's professional fast pitch team, the Texas Smoke. Well, Jade Cargill confirmed, actually confirmed, not jokingly confirmed, confirmed, confirmed as going to WWE, a rumor that, that we thought was very, very possible, now accurate, 100% true. So I guess the, the first question on everybody's mind is, uh, how do you debut her, right? Where, where does she go? Does she go to NXT? Because the, I, I guess the criticism, or, or I don't know if criticism is the right word, but the, the side that says, of course she needs to go to NXT, is the side that's focusing on uh, the part of this uh, release that says that she's only been wrestling for two years, right? Uh, Cargill 31 has been wrestling professionally for only two years. So they would tell you, well, she's only been wrestling for two years, and in those two years, squash match, squash match, squash match, squash match. She basically had a Goldberg run in AEW, and that doesn't really equip you for serious WWE, a serious run in WWE. You could just ask Goldberg, which is true. However, I don't feel like Jade carries herself the way maybe a Goldberg did. I don't think that Jade, I think she values herself, but I don't think she walks around as if 
she's walking into WWE and she's the number one person in the company already. Uh, maybe she, some people think that she is. Maybe she should be. But I just don't think that that's, I don't think that's her vibe. Um, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm making that up. Maybe that is her vibe entirely. Uh, but I think that Jade, of all people, is aware of how she can improve. I think the reason this move is being made, people are going, well, this is a money move, right? I don't think it's a money thing, right? I, I'm, I'm sure money has something to do with it, but I don't think Jade is just sitting there going, well, I'm gonna go to the highest bidder. If AEW is offering me this amount of money and WWE is offering me this amount of money plus $3, I'm going to WWE. I think that WWE is in a position now, especially with Endeavor, where they are able to say, you are incredible. This is what a star looks like where you are. This is what a star looks like where we are. This is what Cody looked like as a top guy in AEW. This is what Cody looks like as a top guy in WWE. And then the money comes into play. This is what Cody made as a top guy in AEW. This is what Cody can make as a top guy in WWE. Jade, this is you as the biggest star in AEW, but this is you as the biggest star in WWE. I think that that Jade is aware that she has the potential to become a household name. And I have always thought that Jade had the potential to become a household name. I've been on the Jade Cargill bandwagon for a long time. I think WWE is required to make Jade Cargill a household name. Uh, and I think that they will, assuming that everything works out with Jade. Now, in terms of where she goes first, I think that the main roster is obvious. This is not an NXT act. I don't think that that all of this is happening so that you can see Jade Cargill wrestling at the Performance Center. I think the idea is that we're already presenting Jade Cargill as an arena act because that's where you're going to see her, arenas. Now, we should keep in mind that when you talk about arenas and you talk about NXT, NXT No Mercy is this weekend. Becky Lynch is the NXT champion. Could Jade Cargill make an appearance at No Mercy? Could Jade Cargill take out Becky Lynch? Very possible. I think the idea of Jade Cargill going after the NXT championship first is possible. But I think that that starts at No Mercy and potentially starts going through on Raw and SmackDown. Now we're getting into TV rights conversations. If you're looking to sell all three properties as different shows, meaning they've already got their deal in place for SmackDown, we're already looking for buyers for Raw. If we want to make NXT its own property and get a third television rights deal for that NXT show, while you don't want to put Jade Cargill on a smaller stage, what you could do is have Jade Cargill chasing the NXT championship on Monday Night Raw against Becky Lynch, have her cutting promos on NXT, thus getting eyes on that product. It's what you could do. I don't know if it's what I would do. I think that it is uh, absolutely essential. And I don't think this is an accident, right? I think that the, the reason that the WWE decided to put out a, a, a press, to, to launch a whole press campaign about the fact that Jade Cargill was coming to WWE and have ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, be the ones who broke that story is because they want to convey that this is a massive, massive story and a massive, massive signing for WWE. This is the first major signing of WWE in the Endeavor era. There is no small anymore. There's no, no, there's no small potatoes. There are people who get signed because they have potential as an athlete, and there are superstars who get signed because they have potential to make money right now. And Jade Cargill is that superstar who has potential to make money right now. You bring in Jade Cargill as a heel, instantly she can do Jade Cargill versus Charlotte. Instantly, Jade Cargill versus Becky Lynch. You bring her in as a as a, as a as a baby face a and Rhea. You're already starting to turn Rhea with all this Nia Jack stuff. Jade Cargill versus Rhea 
has Rhea either as a baby face or a heel. You could have Jade Cargill as a heel face Rhea, or you could have Jade Cargill as a baby face face Rhea. As a baby face, you could also have Jade Cargill face Nia Jax. Also, you've got Bianca Belair on the sidelines ready to go. You got five massive matches. Now, I've said this before. I said this when it was all a rumor. I think that the key for Jade Cargill is not going through classes at the Performance Center. It's reps. She's been in front of an audience. She's been through training. You know, she trained the whole time she was in AEW. It's reps in the ring. If Jade Cargill is going to be a person who headlines pay-per-view matches and is a highlight and massive women's division star because they have great performers in the women's division right now. I just named five of them. Jade Cargill just needs to be on every live event wrestling people like Natalia, wrestling people like Charlotte. This is what's happening with Tiffany Stratton, right? Tiffany Stratton, I think, is now in, in, in almost a finishing school where Tiffany Stratton is on the live events wrestling Becky Lynch and wrestling with Charlotte to get used to not only the WWE environment, but to have these great competitive matches with the best of the best in terms of female performers. And I think that if you have Jade Cargill wrestling on live events against people like Natalia, every single live event, within three months, it's going to be night and day the level of performer that Jade Cargill is. In terms of the name, you keep Jade Cargill. She is Jade Cargill coming in. We signed her because she is already a star. We're going to make her an even bigger star. It is a huge deal that we signed her. So why would we change her name if it was a huge deal? The name Jade Cargill being in WWE, I think, is more valuable long-term than what the IP would be should you rename her. Now, you can add a nickname to her. As I said, you know, several weeks ago, you can give her a, 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 some kind of nickname, maybe like, uh, you know, something breaker, not not heartbreaker, but like, you know, like, I, I don't know, the, the, the way like, uh, uh, something like a vanquisher or something like that. You've, you can find some kind of creative name to give Jade Cargill, but real if and you can own that name, the nickname, but realistically, it's a big deal. That same Jade Cargill, who dominated the other show, now she's here to become a real superstar. That's the story. And WWE is in a place where they are very well aware of how much they benefit by making these signees seem like huge deals. It doesn't make the competition look better. It makes WWE look better because they blow up this person to be an even bigger star and then go, and guess where they decided to sign? With us. Which I think is why, one of the reasons why this signing is such a net positive for wrestling in general. You've now not only got two promotions competing with who can make the bigger star, which is what you want as a performer. You want your company to be invested in creating the biggest stars because that's where AEW is going to have a problem, right? If you're a wrestler who just wants to go and have awesome matches, I don't think you're going to do better than AEW. But if you're a person who wants to be a household name, who wants to be a superstar, I don't think you're going to do better than WWE. And WWE is stepping up their game and with, with having awesome matches. And I think AEW is, will continue to, and is going to need to step up their game in creating larger than life superstars. Cause you need to have both to attract all the great talent. So with two companies working to do both, you're going to have two companies competing to make as many stars as possible, which is great for the performers. Furthermore, when you look at the journey that Jade Cargill has been on, Jade tried out for WWE. There's photos of her at the Performance Center. They said, no, thank you. Coming off of the releases, the WWE talent releases last week, you've got to understand that when you look at this, 
what you're looking at is within this competition, WWE saying no today is simply that. WWE saying no today. That long term, if you're, let's say, Riddick Moss, Riddick Moss put the years in in WWE. He thought he had it all figured out. And then WWE said, you know what? Not today, homie. It's not going to work out. Clearly, if we look at the paths that Cody has been on, if we look at the paths that Jade Cargill has been on, Cody got released from WWE. He became a much bigger star outside of WWE. When he came back, WWE was there to capitalize on it. Jade Cargill got turned down by WWE, became a giant star anyway. WWE was ready to capitalize on it. So if you're somebody who goes to the Performance Center and gets turned down, or if you're somebody like a Riddick Moss, who goes through the system and then gets released. If you can go out there on the open market and show your value, if you can go to AEW and become a star, it's only gonna motivate WWE to wanna make you an even bigger star once your contract is up. This is this is an, an incredible position to be in. I think if you're if you're active, working, wrestling talent, wherever you are. Um, I think the ultimate goal for Jade Cargill is going to be, well, I'll tell you what the ultimate goal is in a minute. Before we get there, there was some, uh, instantly in the Discord, uh, uh, the question came up, what do you think about the AEW? I mean, the, I, I was reading the headline from the uh, ESPN article because that's what I was talking about. What do you think about the ESPN article? Do you think that they should have not put that out and had this been a surprise? We went over this on the podcast with The Rock. There are no accidents. Everything is done on purpose. I think that the WWE is in a place right now where they are crafting, and whether they get it right or wrong, they are crafting these debuts to lend as much star power as they can to certain specific talents. I think that's what they're doing with Jade Cargo. Look, I think the minute Jade Cargo shows up on TV, jaws are going to drop. Either because you know who she is or because you've never seen anybody like her. Because jaws dropped every time she was on AEW TV. She is incredible from the moment she walks through the curtain. But realistically, there are a lot of WWE fans that have never seen a Jade Cargo match. Or if they have, they are watching them on YouTube today for the first time. Realistically, there are many WWE fans that have never seen anybody wrestle in AEW. So, and I'm, I'm, and that may be the case for AEW too. There may be plenty of AEW fans that have never seen, you know, Chad Gable and Otis that have never seen whoever. So, I think that 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 what WWE is doing with this release and why for me, this press release and why for me doing it this way is even better than doing it as a surprise is because it is letting everybody know how big of a star this person is. Everybody who follows WWE online, which is pretty much every WWE fan has now become aware if they weren't already of who Jade Cargill is, what a big deal it is that she signed with WWE and what an impact player she's going to be. Now, when she so shows up, it's not just wrestling fans that watch everything and watched AEW that are going, oh my God, Jade Cargill's here. Now it's, oh my God, this is the one that I read about in ESPN. Oh my God, this is the big signing that everybody was talking about. She's actually here. We've already set her up so that you as a WWE fan know exactly who she is the minute she walks in. The minute she walks in, Michael Cole can say, we read about this on ESPN. We heard about the fact that the hottest free agent was getting signed. I can't believe she's here. That's a much bigger deal than there were rumors and rumblings in the dirt sheets. I think that there is a time and a place for a surprise. I think that Cody as a surprise, but not really a surprise, was good for Cody. Number one, because it wasn't really a surprise. But number two, Cody was a WWE guy. They were portraying Cody as a WWE guy. Cody's history in the WWE was part of his story. It wasn't just some guy from AEW. Jade is now being put into the WWE star-making system. 
And from day one, this is step one. And so for me, doing it this way makes Jade Cargill specifically, I, my opinion might change from talent to talent, but doing it this way makes Jade Cargill specifically come across as a bigger star when she does debut on WWE television. I also think that doing it this way immediately has got to have people in AEW going, oh man, that would be cool. And I've thought about it. They're probably like, so the people in AEW, that I think can look at this and go, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those. There's only a few, right? Not everybody can be a Cody Rhodes or a Jade Cargill. But if I'm an AEW, go, I, I would say Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Britt Baker, MJF, obviously, you know, that goes without saying. I don't know. Those might be my top four. Hobbs, Ricky Starks, MJF, and Britt Baker might be my top four. I'm sure there are some that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. Jamie Hayter is a pretty good one. I think she would have to get back from her injury, though. And, you know, I mean, you look at Tony Storm. The gimmick that Tony Storm is doing right now is so over the top good. If that gets over more than it's getting over now, which is a lot, WWE is going to be looking at that going like, oh, man. We didn't realize she was capable of all this. Let's bring her in as a big deal. Maybe. We'll see. I'm saying it's a good thing, though. It's just more possibilities, more potential. So the ultimate goal for Jade Cargill in WWE, for me, I think it's really simple. When you look at the calendar and you look at the runway, right, she's going in for training at the Performance Center now. I think that that'll really just be figuring out where she's at physically and what kind of work needs to be done. I think that what you're looking at is a ramp up, certainly a potential opponent for Nia Jax short term. But long term, and not even that long term, you've got to be eyeing Jade Cargill as a WrestleMania player. You've got to be eyeing Jade Cargill as one of the women vying for a championship at WrestleMania right now. If everything works out, it could all blow up in everybody's face. But assuming everything works out the way it's supposed to work out, you're looking at Jade Cargill who could come in as early as Saturday or could come in as late as, say, Royal Rumble. But you're looking at Jade Cargill as a potential winner of the Women's Royal Rumble. It doesn't have to happen because maybe you're looking at Jade Cargill as going to Australia and women winning a women's elimination chamber match. Maybe that could be even more impressive than Jade Cargill winning the Royal Rumble. But the point is you're looking at Jade Cargill to either walk into WrestleMania as a champion or a number one contender. And I think that you're looking at spending the next October, November, December, January, February, March. You've got six months. I think you're looking at spending the next six months getting this woman to a place that she has never been in terms of in-ring. Because if you add excellent in-ring to everything else Jade Cargill already has, you've got a beast. You've got an unstoppable force in sports entertainment. I think the, the goal should be to have Jade Cargill's first truly great match to be at WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. And if you can pull that off, we're off to the races. But hey, all of this, it's all just wild speculation because that's what we do here at Not Sam Wrestling. Make sure you're subscribed, uh, whether it's on uh, Spotify or Apple or here on YouTube. Uh, uh, leave in the comments uh, what you think about uh, Jade Cargill uh, and and what it's going to be like for her in WWE, what your expectations are for her in WWE. Hit subscribe, hit like. We'll, uh, we'll see you again. My interview with Andy Williams, a.k.a. The Butcher, still to come this week on Not Sam Wrestling. Have a good one, everybody.